Hey, what's up guys? Today I'm gonna show you how to turn this into this, all using EV inside of Blender 3.6. So let's get started. I'm going to be using the same character from a previous tutorial on how to do realistic lighting in EV. If you haven't seen that video yet, click in the corner to get to that one first. All right, so here is my scene setup. It has an emitter, which is just a mesh. And I turned off the visibility of it. And it has a hair particle system with a bunch of spheres on top of it, right? It's very easy. You just create your particle system inside your render settings, set it to object, and then just reference an object. I grabbed this icosphere because it's low poly. And on my icosphere, I actually put an emissive shader with emission strength to 25. You can also set the color if you like. Maybe like gold, that looks better. All right, first of all, make sure you turn on that of field, otherwise you won't even be seeing any focus. All right, beautiful. Now you can manually pick your object that needs to be in focus, but I made an empty object on my character's face, and I referenced that one in my camera so on your focus on object you can select it and i call this empty focus so if i type it in there you, there it is and then if i grab this focus empty i can move it around and the camera will focus on this point so you can shift and right click on this eye and then set the selection to cursor and now it will perfectly focus on this eyeball all right so if your bokeh doesn't look big enough, the default camera setting in Blender will set the f-stop to 2.8. You can bring this down to 1, and it will give you a more shallow look. Now, there's one way to actually fake an anamorphic bokeh effect, and that's by using the ratio down here. So if I set this to like 2.35, it will give me that effect. However, it won't give me that nice barreling effect where the bokeh is actually curved at the edges of the lens. And I do want that, but how am I going to do that in Eevee? Well, that's what I'm here for, to teach you how to do that. So let's first of all turn the ratio back to 1, because we won't be using that. Then, let's go to our camera. And I'm going to be creating a new plane. So let me do that. Let's turn the render off on here for a second. If you have the copy attributes add-on installed, you can select your plane, then shift select your camera, hit control C to get the menu, and then press copy location, this is control C again, and copy rotation. There we go. Now the plane is exactly in the same exact rotation and position as the camera. I'm going to set my uh, transform orientations from global to local. It was already set to local. Because if I press G and Z, see it will move along the direction of where the camera is facing. Now we'll set it like a little bit right over there. So the camera is just poking out. Let me set this to render view. By the way, if your view isn't blocked, it's probably because your clip start is set on point 0.1 so make sure you change this to 0 0.001 so it has to be blocked all right so let me open the shader editor here i will delete so i'm on my plane right now and i will delete the principal bsdf and instead i will press shift a type in transparent bsdf and I'll also create an image texture. We're not going to create an image, we're going to load one in. And we can connect these two like that. Now, hop into your favorite photo editing software. I'm going to be using Photoshop. And in Photoshop, we're going to be creating our custom bokeh effect. Now, keep in mind, you can give it any kind of shape. So I have already set up the layers here. So the way I did this was basically cut out an ellipse, set a very dark gray color overlay. By the way, make sure your background is black because uh, that will be important for later on. 
and set an inner glow effect. If I open this up, I basically made the size, you know, very big and then brought the opacity down to like halfway. Press OK. And the cool thing about this is if you add different shapes, it will do the exact same thing. Then I overlaid a bunch of noise, basically. So here I just drew on a bunch of, you know, lines that represent like hair on the on the lens. I added some scratches and some finger smudges. And you can find these images just online or go to cgtextures.com or any of those websites. So after you've made your custom bokeh, save it out as a PNG file. Let's go back to Blender. All right, we're back in Blender and I'm going to be opening up my custom bokeh. Let's go to material preview here. Let's see, if you have the Node Wrangler add-on, you can press Control T. And by the way, I previewed it by hitting Control Shift left mouse click and it will uh, show me the actual okay now the way the transparent node works is that everything that's white will be see-through everything that's black will remain opaque and we don't see anything happening yet but that's because we need to turn on some settings here so in your material settings make sure you turn on screen space reflection and for blend mode set it to alpha blend and for some reason it will automatically also turn on show back face so just uncheck that there we go now if i render this out well, it is rendered out nothing happens but we need to scale this down i could scale it down like this but i'm only going to need the circle to be scaled down instead of the whole box so over here my texture coordinate node i will Instead of UV, I will pick the object and parent it to a vector. And it will repeat it. So under texture, set repeat to clip. And now it's just in one corner. So just if you can move this up. Pick 0 0.5 on the X and 0 0.5 on the Y will center it. And then you can create a value node. Plug that in here. You set it to one, you'll get the same effect, and you scale it up, you can get a smaller image, which is what we want. So, let's bring this in front of the camera for a second. Now, right now, nothing is happening, and the reason why is Eevee's default depth of field settings will not allow you to do anything fancy. What you need to do is go into the render settings, open depth of field, and enable jitter camera okay i'm also gonna enable high quality slide defocus so you notice we're getting somewhere okay you might not notice it okay so our image is very dark let's fix that first so let's move this to the right and i will add a color ramp see a converter converter color ramp and add that in there and i will really crush the texture so it's go pretty extreme on that all right i was just figuring out why the camera is still uh, defocused and i know earlier i said turn off show back face but we actually need show back face to be checked so check show back face and now we're going to notice a whole bunch of interesting stuff. Let me make this bigger. So watch what happens if I bring the texture closer to the camera. Okay, let's do a bit closer. And let's scale it down. Even more. bring it even closer to the camera so we're starting to see different shapes of bokeh which is already giving us a much more natural look which is crazy because we're doing it this is all real time and even 
and bring it even closer. Now if we want that barreling effect where the sides are curving, we can bring the texture further away from the camera. So you, you can see what it's basically doing. It's cutting out a hole. And where the cuts are, like if you move it, you can see the cuts very visibly. That's before it actually like uh, focuses. But where the cuts are, it will actually curve it along with the, with the hole. So I put it right there and then I can scale this down even more. Yeah, see we're getting this beautiful curvature in the bokeh, which looks very natural and we can turn up the particles here. So if I go into my emitter, my particle system, turn the number up to 500. Let's go even bigger than that, a thousand, thousand, and then make this bigger. That looks beautiful. I've sometimes heard people say that the sample count in EV doesn't do anything. It actually does when you start using stuff like Jitter Camera. So if I turn the viewport sample to 1, it's like we turned off Jitter Camera, right? But if I turn it up to 100, you know, it's basically, you can see it like spiraling. It's, it's rendering out the individual bokehs. And honestly, 100 samples in EV is still way faster than, you know, cycles, for instance. For the image that I showed at the beginning, I used 250 samples, and it will still render just fine. Another thing you can do is change the max size of the depth of field. So I turn this to 350 pixels. It will not cap if you had any bokeh that's bigger than 100 pixels. It will allow it to be bigger than that. All right, there's one more thing we can do to even enhance this image even more. And that's by going into the compositor. Press this drop down uh, icon. You can set the compositor to always on or camera. So we'll just set it to camera. And I already put up a little and I already made a small setup over here. I'm basically doing a little bit of color grading. It's very subtle. And then I'm going through a glare node to add, basically add balloon, add like glow to the brightest parts of the image. And then a lens distortion node. All right, here's the final artwork. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Next week, I'll be going over using light probes and baking lights inside of EV to enhance your lighting even more. Hit a like on this video if it helped you out. Subscribe, all of that. See you in the next video.